Okay. All right. My name is Skip Bird. I am from the Westminster Astronomical Society. I actually wear two hats, this, three hats this weekend. Three hats? Three hats. And actually, I'll wear one of them here in a second. Uh, one of them is I'm with the Westminster Astronomy Club. All right. I'm the outreach coordinator with that. I'm also one of the mentors with the Night Sky Network. And last but not least, I also do some part-time work for hands-on optics. All right. And tonight's program is Chicken Little Was Right. The sky is falling. But first Hey, all right, all right, all right. Remember, the tonight's talk was what? By who? All right. You sure? All right. Chicken Little. Anybody know who Chicken Little is? No? Who's Chicken Little? Yes, the sky is falling. All right? But why did he say the sky was falling? He was hit with something, okay. What was he hit with? Acorn. acorn, right, right, right. He didn't know it was an acorn. He didn't see it hit him. It landed on his head, knocked him down. He looked around. It was just another acorn on the ground, so he didn't know it. And over the years, we've been finding lots and lots and lots of things falling out of the sky. Uh, Dan, Dan, are you here? Are you outside? Nope, okay. Dan's not here. That's good. Uh, he has a lot of the samples of the sky is falling meteorites, uh, the rocks. I mean, just the other day I was reading, you know, I was watching the news and they were talking about pieces of an engine cowling falling off of an aircraft landing on a gas station. Fortunately, I don't have any of those parts. Okay, all right. I'd like to get one. I know a guy who has a couple of pieces from uh, a couple of the spacecraft that have came back in. Uh, he got a piece of what is, what's the one that landed in Australia not too long ago? You remember somebody's rocket landed back there? Chinese one? Chinese one, I think it was. He got a piece of that. And then he's got the one, the Skylab or whatever it was, that blew up and, or pieces of it landed in Canada. He got some of that, All right? Because it fell on private property, even though it was a national thing. The guy sued the government and he kept his pieces of his aircraft, so he's selling them now, which is okay. All right. So there's things like that. I don't have any of those. I do have some nifty little things called meteorites, okay? All right. Now, Dave and I had a discussion. This is a meteorite. You've all seen them out there. I'm going to pass this one around. I'm also going to pass the magnet around because later on we're going to have a guess the meteorite contest. And if you guess right, you get a prize. Now, I can't find my meteorites that I'm going to give away, but I'll find one before the day is over. Okay? It is slightly magnetic. It is not very magnetic. If you take this big magnet here, it's definitely magnetic. Okay? This thing will suck the iron out of your blood if you're not careful. <laughs> See these little squares? They're the magnets. All the rest of this is to hold on to the magnets. All right? Uh, we don't have anything large in metal, otherwise I can, well, here, I'll just do it this way. All right? Four inches off the ground, it pulls them off the table. Okay? So, that's a large bag. So, I'll pass those around. This is a common, what do you call it? Common chondrite? Or what was the common, what was the word he used? Anybody know? Ordinary chondrite, there you go, ordinary chondrite, okay, there you go, pass that around, it's not too magnetic. But that's one of the rocks that fell. Now the neat thing about that, well, let me see it real quick, all right, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to have a test. Before the night's over, I ask questions, you got the right, and by the way, I'm a science teacher, so if you don't raise your hand, you call it out, you don't get a prize. If you raise your hand and I call on you, you get the prize, okay, all right, so. I was, when I was growing up and when I was going to school, I, had to, I was having difficulty figuring out what was, you know, meteorite, what was a meteor, what was a meteoroid, those type of things. And finally, I had a, a student that I was working with was trying to teach them this stuff, and he goes, well, it's easy. Meteoroid rhymes with asteroid, all right? So those are the rocks floating around in space. And by the way, there is no distinction between what's a meteoroid and what's an asteroid. Some people say size. Well, nowhere in there does it say if it's more than 1.4 meters, is it an asteroid or is it a meteor meteoroid? They can be both. Basically, if they run into us eventually, then they're a meteoroid. If they don't run into us, then they're an asteroid. Okay. All right. That's the best explanation you're going to get. So meteoroid, meteoroid is floating around, rhymes with asteroid. That's cool, cool. And then you've all been out here, especially if you've been out here the last couple of nights, you've all seen some meteors in the sky, right? It's like, meteor! And of course, you're doing that and everybody else is going, what? What? <laughs> it's too late. So meteor! It's too late to look. If somebody goes, meteor! It's a flash of light. So meteor's flash of light. So that's a quick, meteor, there we went. 
And I've been looking around occasionally. I went to a program one time and I was doing something on my star table, my chart, and all of a sudden I see the ground light up. I see my shadow, I see the ground, I see everything. I'm going, <laughs> I missed it. Everybody's going, wow, did you see that? All right, well, about 20 minutes later, I happen to be lucky enough to be looking in that direction when his patriot or his partner went by. So I got to see everything flash in there. Some people are still watching, but other people are also looking the other way because they were looking at the northern lights. <coughs> so that was one of those things that happened. Now, Chicken Little got hit with something in rock. And by the way, he got hit with an acorn. It only fell a few feet. We all knew, know Newton. It doesn't hurt very much when it falls, right? All right. Well, if I drop this on your head from 300 feet... You think that'll hurt? Yeah, yeah, it'll definitely. I have actually a little dent right here, all right? All right. Not from the rock, it's from the light above my bed. It's got a big wooden frame, and I raised right up and went chunk. I saw stars and go, wow, the sky is falling. But it wasn't, all right? But I'm still trying to figure out, how can I remember meteorite? Well, they finally figured it out was, the guy put it on the ground and says, meteorite there. I go, yeah, I know the meteorite's there. No, no, meteor right there. No, 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 that's not a meteor, it's a meteorite. No, it's a meteorite there. So I finally figured out, ah, meteorite there. So the meteorite there. Now, it could be a meteor wrong there too, but uh, that's not the same thing. So that's how I figured out what they were. So if I say, what's on the ground? You know what it's going to be? It's going to be a meteorite. meteorite. Okay, if I say it's flying through space and it hasn't ran into the earth, it's a meteoroid. meteoroid. Ooh, I heard a meteor there. And if it burns up in our atmosphere, it's now called a Meteor, okay, okay, all right. Now, now we can pass these around, okay? And that's not very magnetic, so that's, very stone, that's a stony rock there. Excuse me. All right, now this talk is a little bit about that. Now, the reason I'm talking more about meteors and stuff like now is because uh, I have best laid plans of mice and men's. This was a container full of carbon dioxide, frozen carbon dioxide, okay? But we had a problem last night. Did it rain? Right? Okay. So I've got about that big of much carbon dioxide, and then I got about this of ice. Okay, we're going to see if it works anyway. We're going to try it out anyways. We're going to try our experiment later. But uh, since I've only got a little bit of the carbon dioxide, we're just going to talk about this, and I'll use it as my example. All right. As you notice, as I walk around, notice the smoke coming out of it. Not really smoke, is it? It's water vapor. This is so cold, it's freezing the water out of the atmosphere, can we get a little, do we get any smoke out of it? Nope. Water out of the atmosphere and leaves a trail. Now, comets are giant slushy snowballs, okay? Just giant dirty snowballs. Some are going to be as small as what I'm going to make tonight. Other ones could be the size of the state of Maryland. Uh, remember the Crutz family of sun grazers? All right, that was a very large comet. They estimate about 200, 150 to 200 miles across that broke up over, what, 12, 1300 years ago. And now every day we see pieces, sometimes the size of a house, sometimes they consider some of the great comets over the last two centuries were part of that meteor, or that comet that's been going around. Hopefully there'll be another big chunk coming by any day now, because it's real cool. Anybody see Hale Bop? All right, how about Hayataki? All right, how about the inside of your eyelids? All right, good, good, just want to make sure, all right. But as a comet goes around the sun, just like that light, it heats it up and leaves a little trail. Well, that little trail is full of, you know, we'll see in a minute, dirt and dock, dirt, excuse me, dirt and rocks. No, there's no dirt in space. It's just rocks. Rocks, we think of sand, dust particles, things along those lines, okay? And what happens is it leaves it behind, just goes around, leaves it a little behind. No, don't touch it. That's 107 degrees below zero. Your temperature is 98 degrees above zero. That's 200 degrees difference. Anybody see the movie Christmas Story? Kid put his tongue on a pole? All right. That was only about 20 degrees. You know, this is definitely below zero. This, if I hold it in my hand, will freeze the water molecules in my hand, cause them to burst, rupture all the cells, and end up with blisters. And lots of pain, so we won't do that. But here, so we're going to do it this way here real quick. All right, there. I'm going to put that, put that in there, those of you who can see that. Right, here, let me put this on the floor for now. All right. Okay. Now, this is a magic hammer. Would you inspect that and make sure it's a magic hammer, please? Uh, it feels like a regular hammer. Oh, wow, I didn't like that. I want... Is it a magic hammer? Is it a magic hammer? Check it out. No. Yes, it is. I can make it sing. 
Hopefully I can make it sing. Oh, I don't guess I can make it sing. <laughs> Try it on a different table. No. All right, hell. All right, it is a bad camera. It's just the wooden, the wooden tables don't work so well. So here, let's try something else. Let's try this. Let's try my mag my magic spoons. Check my spoons out. Are they magic? No. Huh? Oh yeah, I bet they are. All right, let me look. Let's see here. Where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, these are dirty spoons. Anybody got a clean spoon with them? All right. All right. Here, can you see yourself in that? Barely. Are you right side up or upside down? Uh, right side up. All right, ready? Abracadabra, I'm going to flip you over on your head, and I'm going to turn you upside down. <laughs> are you upside down? I can barely see myself. But are you upside down? Yes. See? Magic. <laughs> he didn't leave. I got him to flip, all right? I told you they're magic spoons, all right? They can also sing occasionally, too. For the people out in the audience. Okay. Magic spoon. Now, those of you who are physicists and everything know why it's magic. But those of you who don't, I'll have to explain it to you. What happens is when you turn from a solid to a gas, you sublimate. And when you do that, you expand. You're like me. Okay, you expand. I'm turning into a gas. All right. You expand. Well, what happens is it's pushing on this spoon. It suddenly goes, wow, this spoon's hot. I'm going to turn it into gas. It pushes up on the spoon. Once it pushes up on the spoon, it, it, all these little gas molecules go, I'm free, I'm free, and they run away. All right. When they run away, they're not supporting the spoon anymore. The spoon falls back down, touches the dry ice again, does the whole thing over to the tune of about, I don't know, about 30 times a second, which is what the buzz we hear. All right. So they're doing all this stuff. That's why they're magic. All right. So we'll put this back in here. Maybe we can get enough out of it to do something with. If not, we'll just put more in there. All right, so Chicken Little. Are we talking about Chicken Little? Okay, good. Chicken Little. All right. Let's see. We're going to start with, we're going to start with this song. I'm going to skip the first one. Now we're going to sing that. <laughs> Those of you who remember the Comet commercial, okay? All right, so, all right we won't sing it then. We'll, we'll just go on to the next thing. All right, all right. But we are going, we're going to try and make a comet because out of all 44 meteor showers we have every year, 42 of them are made by comets, okay? Trails left over comet pieces. The other two are made by asteroids, but they assume from their orbits and everything that they're actually comets that eventually had just burned off all the ices and stuff along those lines. So we're going to try and make a comet. Now, it may or may not work, because like I said, we have some difficulties. But we're also going to be scientists. You want to be a scientist today? How about you ladies? All right, you? All right, as a scientist, we got to make observations. How about you? You want to be a scientist? Sure. Okay, all right, we got to make observations. So if I were to put on my... Oh, by the way, and whenever you're cooking up a comet, you got to have a comet chef hat, okay? Uh, you got to have chef hat on. Oh, and you also got to wear an apron, don't you? All right, you got to make sure because you don't want to get it on your clothes. Uh-oh. Who put this on? Ah. Ah. Wait a minute here. You like my new apron? Something seems to be wrong with this apron. What is it? Inside out. Ah, inside out. Hey, you're a scientist. You made an observation. All right. So, if I was to say that my hat is blue, is that true? Yeah. No, it's got some blue in it, but it's mostly white. So, that would be something wrong. So, you'd say, ah, Mr. Skip, Mr. Skip, raise your hand. I'll go, yes. You say, yeah, your hat was white, and it's not blue, and I give you a prize. Okay? And then, like I said, occasionally we'll call out to the people down at the other end, and we'll have them answer, and I'll give them prizes too. All right? You just got to remember who you, are, who you are, so you can come back up here and get them. Okay? All right. All right, so we're going to make a comet. So we're going to put comets, we're going to make only 
Comets are full of a lot of ingredients, but we're only going to put in five of them today. We're going to make our comet out of five ingredients, okay? They're going to be ammonia, polyachromic, polyachromic hydrocarbons, rock, uh, carbon dioxide, and carbon, uh, see, dihydrogen monoxide. All right, so y'all ready? All right, no you're not, because the first thing I said, we're going to put five ingredients. How many fingers do I got up? Oh. See? Look at this. You're not being very good scientists. Seven. All right. I got, why do I got seven fingers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, guys. Whose turn is it? Their turn. Why are you guys up? I know you're excited about it, but no, it's not your turn. All right. There are five. My dad said you can always talk to yourself, but never lose the argument. Okay? So, all right. We're going to put five things in a comet. The first thing that goes in a comet is rock. Sand, dust, rock. No dirt. Dirt has organic material in it. Dead animals, dead plants, dead people. All right? So we're just going to put regular old dirt. Oh, wait, I didn't say, I said, ah, what? Rock. rock, all right, it's supposed to be rock, not dirt, so you get the first prize. Here you go. All right, have a solar sun pizza. Right. I'll grab something else, give me something later. But if you look on my hand, can you see on my hand? Let me find a white spot. Yeah, see all that dust? See all dust flying down through there? All right, that is mostly what you see when you look up and see a meteor go burning across the sky. Remember Einstein, that guy with the big bushy eyebrows like me? Right. Einstein, he came up with this weird equation, E equals mc squared. What's all that mean? E is the energy, m is mass, c is light, light squared. Light's a big number, right? All right? I'll be asking a question later. I want to know light to six decimal places. <laughs> the speed of light. Thank you, speed of light. There, see, he's paying attention. Pass that back to him. Here, catch it. All right. All right, all right. the speed of light. Speed of light squared, that's a big number. It multiplied by itself is an even bigger number. So a little bitty piece of mass, like these little dust grains, all right, going at double or at speed of light squared turned into a lot of energy, which is what we see. Well, we don't actually see the meteor burning up in the sky. We see the trail of energy that it leaves behind. We see the plasma. It could be, you know, a few hundred yards across and a few miles across. That's a short one, by the way. The big ones that we see streak all the way across the sky, they might be the size of a pea or maybe a large grain of sand or two. But they're doing 60, 70 miles a second. And everybody says, well, how fast is 70 miles a second? 70 miles a second is not the same as 70 miles an hour. 70 miles a second, I get from here to Richmond in three seconds. And I get across the U.S. in about three minutes. All right, so that's, oh, okay, that's fast, but that's still not that fast. All right, so the first ingredient we put in there was rock. All right, does that look like rock to you? I want to make sure there's no, no tricks up my sleeve. All right. Does that look like a rock to you? All right. Hopefully we're going to come out with a slushy, dirty snowball, but we may just come out with a big pile of mud. All right. The second most plentiful chemical in a comet is, not this, is methane. Who had beans tonight? Who had beans tonight? Yeah, beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you make methane. Yes. No, no, I said it wasn't this. All right, but I like the way you're thinking. I like the way you're thinking. You know what? Here, you can have a prize anyways, too. All right. All right. There you go. All right, good. No, nope, it's methane. That's the second most plentiful chemical in a comet is methane. But if this was methane, it's a gas at this temperature it opened up. The methane gas would flow into here. He's over there taking pictures, probably a spark from that. We'd all blow up. The mountain place would burn down. They'd never invite me back. I killed everybody. All right. Which is not a problem if you're teaching school kids, especially middle school kids. All right, parents say, hey, get, hire that guy again. All right, so I said, all right, can be methane. What's the next most plentiful chemical in outer space? Hydrogen cyanide. I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, hydrogen cyanide. Hydrogen is that thing that they put in the, the, the Hindenburg, right? It blows up really well, even better than methane. And cyanide is what most people take when they're trying to kill themselves or die off. So I know those two together can't be any good. So I said, okay, we can't use hydrogen cyanide because, again, I do the same thing. Open up the lid or percolate around the room, you all go, what's that it smell, and we'd all be dead, okay? So I go on, okay, I'm looking down the list, looking down, ha, ah, here it is, ammonia. Now, as a scientist, I was running late, you know, as a, not really a scientist, but as a, as a scientist, I was running late, I ran to the store, I need some ammonia, I looked down, ah, ammonia, I grabbed it, ran out the door, all right, paid for it, got there. Well, when the first time I made this, it didn't work right. It actually blew up, okay? Because I go, well, why did it blow up? And then I look down here. Oh, all-purpose cleaner with ammonia and lemon scent. 
<laughs> okay, so, uh, so if it starts hissing and bubbling, uh, I'm going out that door, so don't get in my way. <laughs> all right, all right. None of this women and children first. No, no. If there's a bear, I'm tripping you. They like young and tender stuff. They don't want old and stringy stuff, okay? So they'll take their, you know, plenty of time. She's smiling, but she doesn't really know. She's in the way, okay? Anybody not smell ammonia before? Uh, well, kids, you're going to have to ask your parents, because last time I let my, I said, can you smell it? And the wife, mom says, sure. So I go over there, I was going to hand him a lid. He grabs this and goes, <laughs> laid right out on the floor, man. <laughs> if he'd started twitching, I'd have been in trouble. But I, she said, you warned him. I said, okay, mom, whatever you say. So ammonia. All right, ammonia. Now. It only blew up once. I've done this hundreds of times. It hasn't blown up since. <sighs> Center myself, okay. Okay, nothing's happening. I forgot something on the car. I'll be right back. All right, okay. All right, now, the third most plentiful chemical, and I actually gave you guys a hint earlier today. Uh, Barbara, are you in here? Barbara, are you out there? All right. Well, Barbara, this is yours. Remember, you're talking about cleaning off your windowsills. Okay, so the next third most plentiful chemical in the comet is polyaromatic hydrocarbons. I used to say polyaromic, but it's called aromatic hydrocarbons. Things that long chain molecules are made out of, things that life is made out of. Everything that we know that lives has got polyaromatic hydrocarbons in it. All right? Now, I couldn't go up into space and get that because this would be worth tens of millions of dollars. Well, if I could, then I wouldn't waste it on a comet. But if I could, I'd probably waste it on a comet. I'd sell off half of it, you know, make a few million dollars, and then use the rest to do this stuff. So since I can't go up in space, I go, on, what can I use for polyaromic hydrocarb? Ah, if it's in everything alive, it's probably still there when everything is dead, right? So what I do is I go around my house or any other place I'm at. I look around on the windowsill. I get all the dead flies. I get all the dead bugs. If I'm really lucky, I'll find a pile of Stink bugs, they work really good. I know they got polyaromatic hydrocarbons in it, but if I'm really, really, really lucky, I'll find a mouse in a mouse trap. Okay? I throw them all in the blender, add a little water, blend them all up, run it through a coffee drainer so I don't get any mouse brain parts, and then I pour it in here. But for this to work, this to work, the comet to work correctly, it's got to be the right consistency. All right? And only, unfortunately, the only way to tell if it's got the right consistency is. <laughs> yeah, that's mouse brains, all right. Woo. Anybody want to taste? Want to lick? No? no? Oh, come on, man. Yeah. I did 25 of these one day, and by the end of the day, I just couldn't make myself do it anymore. I, was, I can't test this. It's just going to have to work or it's not. So, all right. So, we have put in how many things? Three. Three, all right. Does that look like a comet yet? Does that look like a dirty snowball? No. Does that look like a dirty snowball to you? Nope. All right, I want to make sure, I want to get a good opinion. Does that look like a dirty snowball to you? Now, by the way, this is probably all it's going to look like the rest of the night. So. All right, because the fourth most important ingredient is the thing called carbon dioxide. All right, and unfortunately, let's see, where's the magic hammer? All right, I don't even have to worry about it. Usually I go under here and I just, ow. And there's plastic in there too. No, there's not. All right. Ah, here we go. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, ignore the plastic. Now, if we ever found plastic in a comet, we would know there's alien life out there. Okay. All right. Now, see, I know this is not carbon dioxide for one. It's not doing anything, all right? I figure it's going to be hard enough. If I'd have been smart when I got here, I would have probably came in and asked these young ladies, ma'am, can I keep this in your freezer? But no, I'm not, you know. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention, all right? So let's see here. All right, just want to make sure. Got safety glasses on? Huh? No? Oh, then we'll all go blind together, so. All right, all right, all right. Put that in there. Ignore the man behind the curtain. All right. Hmm. Aluminum 
Is there, is there lumen in it? Yeah, there's lumen in there. What are you staring at me for? Huh? Huh? Have you ever seen a man crush ice before? Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the last of my Dr. Pepper, so I definitely don't want to don't waste it. All right, you know what? I'm just going to dump it all in there. We'll go for the best. All right. Mm, anybody want some? It's good. Ew. Ew. I keep my polyroman chirocrimes in there, too. All right. So we're going to mix it all up, shake it all about, and presto, we have... We have, we don't have a comet. What happened? Yes. Oh, there's the guy. He, I forgot the fifth thing. I said we're gonna put in five, and I only gave him four. All right, here, have a DVD. Ooh, a DVD really? Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, see, I'm particled. All right. All right. So, excuse me. All right, so, ah, the fifth ingredient. The fifth ingredient is the most deadliest chemical of them all in a comet, okay? It is so bad that in its solid form, it will crush you. In its superheated form, it will melt the flesh off your skin. Iron? Iron? Nope, 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 nope. It's so deadly that too much of it will kill you. Not enough of it will, if you don't have enough of it, you can't live. It's called dihydrogen monoxide, and your body's made 85% out of it. I know you know the answer, so put your hands back down, okay? This is for the people who don't know the answer, okay? All right, dihydrogen monoxide. So let's take a look at the word. Dihydrogen. Di means two. Two hydrogen. I remember the hydrogen stuff. That's the stuff that blows up. Mono means monoxide. Mono means one. One oxygen. So what do you have when you have two hydrogens and one oxygen? Water, all right, give the guy a prize, all righty. What grade are you in? Seven. Seven. Oh, you're too old for this, sorry. No, okay. <laughs> Seventh grade, all right, all right. So my science, my, my money's going to good use. He knew what it was. Yes, dihydrogen monoxide, water. By the way, there's a website on dihydrogen monoxide, the dangers of. They've actually got examples of school districts and other places banning the use of dihydrogen monoxide because it's so deadly, all right? Now... Again, we got to be precise in this, and I don't know if that's the right amount. It's probably too much anyway, so. Oh, yeah, definitely there's nothing in there but ice now, all right? All right, so put a little bit in there. There. There, that's precise. Okay. All right, now, now because we're up in space, we're going to mix this all up, and we're going to shake it all around, and it leaks a little bit, so don't worry about it. Oh, man, don't come over here. All right, well, this is the big part. See, this is the part where I run screaming from the room because if this was full of carbon dioxide, this thing would be getting really big and big and going like that. And I'd yell, boom! Hey, she jumped anyways, all right? <laughs> and I would drop it and run out, try and run out the door, all right? So, all right? so that's not working. There is some of it working here, so we may be able to get something out of this, okay? So I apologize for the fact that it's not working. But uh, that's beside the point. Oh, while you're looking at that, during the commercial break, I like Calvin and Hobbes. You'll see that I like that a lot. But here, basically, the cloud of stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way, our solar system's on the edge of it. We hurl through incomprehensible darkness in cosmic terms. We are subatomic particles and a grain of sand on the infinite beach. For a six-year-old, he's got a big vocabulary. Sometimes I have to look up the words, all right? And then he looks up there and he goes, huh, I wonder what's on TV now. He always brings it back down to important stuff, all right? And as we look outside tonight, because it was clear last night, but as we look outside tonight, think about that. You're seeing more stars than most people ever see in their lifetime, counting everything they ever saw, all right? And how many of those have planets around them? As we heard from the guy last night, almost every one of them, all right? Well, at least almost, almost every one of them. And we got, you know, if you do the numbers with the Drake equation, uh, there's got to be somebody out there, whether we talk to them or not. Uh, and actually, you'll find out later on that uh, one, of the one of the questions is. All right. all right. Well, this is going to be the best I can do here, folks. So, all right. So, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it failed miserably. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. I'll just pick it up this way. All right. Of all the things, I've lost a lot of things in my life, okay? I've lost my car keys. I've lost toys. 
Uh, I lost my homework. Actually, the dog ate it. No, wait, wait. I didn't have a dog, so I told him the dog ate it, but I actually lost my homework. I hadn't actually lost it. I just didn't do it. So see, it doesn't work. So don't even try it. Your dad's been there. Your mom's been there. More times than you will ever know. More than they'll ever admit, too. Okay? But of all the things, I even lost my kids, but they keep coming back. All right? Next time we're going to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> we'll see if they find their way home then. All right? So, like I said, again, whoop, whoop, sorry. Sorry, we've had a disconnection. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing, testing. There we go. Okay, back to that. Uh, but all the things I've lost, you know what I missed the most? My mind, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But, unfortunately, the third brain does not live, and it doesn't make, there, that's my comment, okay? Oh, see, I'm sorry, it doesn't work. If it doesn't have the, the carbon dioxide, anybody got any carbon dioxide? No? Okay, I didn't think so, all right? Unfortunately, it doesn't work, all right? But if it did work, what I would do is I'd reach in here and I'd pull out this big chunk of, Ow, this is actually still cold. I'd pull out this big... Yes? Uh-huh, uh-huh. What did I say about hissing and spewing and smoking? Can you hear it? No, yeah. not that thing over there either. Yes. Yeah. Is it still hissing and spewing and smoking? Yeah. All right, let me see if I can find one of them. All right, I know there's got to be a chunk in here somewhere. Ow, that's cold. There we go. All right, we'll use this one. All right, there we go. Dirty snowball with aluminum in it, but it's not in that form, okay? All right, there is aluminum in the comments, but not to this. All right, actually what this would look like would be a big slushy snowball, little baubles and everything like that looks like a brain. I'm sorry about that, didn't work. Uh, and that would be my comment. Now the comment here would be sitting here smoking and spewing and steaming and things along those lines. And if you look on my hand, you see little pieces of dirt. That's the comment. As it floats through space, it sublimates. It leaves this behind. We run into it at 70 miles a second and that creates our meteors and our meteor showers. And if we're lucky, who's got the meteorite? Oh, ah, see, did everybody see it? No, all right, all right. If we were lucky, we'd go. Meteorite, no, meteorite there. Meteorite there, meteor, right there. Not one of those, okay? Here, let's pass it back around this way. They didn't see it in the back, so I pass it there, okay? All right, meteor right there. We'd be lucky to find one of those rocks from space. All right, now, somebody says, ah, rocks. We saw this one already. Let's go on to this one. Oh, come on, where are you at? Hey, it works. Oh, by the way, if you're expecting any kind of like fancy PowerPoint presentation with that, you ain't getting it from me. All right, Okie Tech Star Party. Anybody been there? All right, 2008, that's one of the bolides going across there. We all recognize this little guy right here. Right? Orion? Yep, yep, yep. He's pointing down at the ground. Of course, that's going that way. That was probably a grain of sand or maybe a pea. All right? And by the way, it does not all vaporize. Okay? So, to the tune of 30 tons a day of dust is falling into our atmosphere onto our planet. Luckily, it's mostly dirt, which averages out to more falling on than we send out into space. So, we're still on the gaining weight system. All right? All right. Some of you will recognize this picture. This is Tunguska, Siberia. 800 square miles, of, see back here, of trees flattened. Uh, they have theorized that a comet hit the atmosphere, blew up eight miles above the ground, which is higher than most jet aircraft fly, most airliners fly, and flattened 800 square miles below it. Pretty good for a dirty snowball, okay? And I don't remember if they said it was 50 or 100 feet across. It was not that big. Happened in 1908. It happened so far out in the middle of nowhere, it took them to 1929 or 1928 to get to it. And it was so loud that they heard the, they were able to measure or hear the air pressure changes in London twice. It went around the earth twice from that boom. All right. It took a while for all the, for the rumors to get out, and somebody says, hey, we heard something. We're getting rumors that something happened. And they went out there. They did not find anything. There's supposedly now there's a lake there or something like that, but they have not found anything but small particles, like micrometeorites and stuff along those lines. They, never, they haven't found any big chunks like you're seeing right there, okay? All right? So that's, that's, luckily for us, that didn't hit us, okay? Uh, here, let me make this a little bit bigger. We'll actually see this a little bit later. There you go. This is, I think it's Wolf Creek in Australia. 
All right? It's hard to see because I zoomed it up so much, but it's Wolf Creek in Australia. That's only about a half mile across. That's not very big. We'll actually we'll come back. Oops, come back to that one, okay? This one, this is, notice the people over here? This is South America. I think this is six years ago, seven years ago. This is about uh, 150, 200 feet across. All right? There's three of them there, I think, is what they said. Uh, they, when this picture was taken, the last time I heard it, they hadn't found anything yet, but they, they were suspecting natural gas, something along those lines, but there's no, this is out in the middle of a desert. Right? The only thing they think of was a basketball-sized chunk of rock still moving pretty quickly, made that crater, all right? and then water filled it in. Uh, I haven't, since I put this up here, I haven't found any more information, but if anybody knows any information, which if Dave was here, I'd ask him, okay? All right. Then there's my favorite, one of my favorites is, this is a crater, all right? That crater's about 60 miles across. That one's a little bit less, and these are all in. This is, these are craters that are happening on the, our moon, right? We've all seen that. Our moon has got a record of things falling out of the sky for the last four and a half, four billion years or so. Notice there are all these little craters here, all right? Most of these little craters are about, oh, I, don't, I think in this picture they, were, they told me that they're a quarter mile. So even these little dots, so that's about, this is 100 and something miles across, and this is a quarter mile across. So uh, that's a pretty big dent. I'd hate for something like that to fall on us. But my favorite one of all is, now we talked about things falling out of the sky, you know, hitting Chicken Little and stuff like that. Well, one day something fell out of the sky, oh, sorry, and killed the planet. No, wait. <laughs> killed the car. All right. This is the peak scale meteorite. If anybody lived in Maryland in 1989, you actually saw this on TV, okay? They were filming a football game, and a television crew looked up and saw this bowl eyed going across the sky. And by the way, as you watch the videos, you see all these little pieces fall off. Nobody's found those little pieces yet, okay? They're out there. There's meteorites out there. They estimated between two and 300 of what they can see just from the video that have fallen between here and Peekskill, New York, all right? It fell out of the sky, landed on the car, killed the car. Right. Now, the real side story about this is the 17-year-old girl that lives there with her dad took the car out the night before and went out with her friends. Came home, parked it, went to bed. <laughs> dad gets up the next morning because the neighbors are banging on her and said, something happened to your car. Because they didn't see it. At the time, it was still under here in this hole in the concrete. Okay? And so he walks out there, and of course, what's his first reaction? <laughs> what did you do to my car? I didn't do anything, Daddy, no, no! You know? And then somebody says, wow, what's this big rock? So then he thinks, did the kids throw a rock at my car? But, uh, hi, this is State Farm Insurance. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, my car got killed last night. Got killed? Yeah, a rock fell on it. A rock fell on it? Yeah, it went right through it. It did, it went right through it. By the way, that's what they call when those uh, uh, common chondrites or whatever they're called, all right? Uh, uncommon? It's, yeah, it wasn't worth that much. It was worth maybe a few thousand dollars because it's the size and everything. But because it hit a car and killed a car, they sold the car, I think, five years ago and the rock for $100,000. Okay? Where's my car when I need it? I actually lived, worked six blocks away from there and moved six months before. I was real disappointed. I could have been, I could have been nearby, you know? I could have ran over there. Oh, look, I could have fall, saw it fall out of the sky, ran over there and took it. I don't know what happened to your car, but I found this in a yard. You know? My yard, not your yard, my yard. Well, there's no dent in your yard. Well, uh, you know, well, how do you explain this car and the pieces that are in it? But it killed it, all right? It killed it. All right? So we're lucky, all right? All right, now, this one here, I'll zoom this up for you. But this is my comment about some things, all right? I was reading the other day about countless species being pushed towards extinction by man's destruction of the forest. Sometimes I think the surest sign of intelligent life is elsewhere in the universe is that none of it has tried to contact us. Okay? Now, I do a program when I'm talking about life in the universe because they're part of the Night Sky Network programs that I do. And I, when I'm talking about it, I'm talking about intelligent life. We're talking about what makes different planets uh, you know, unique. I would get to Earth. Well, Earth has water in all three states. I said it's unique for two reasons. It has intelligent life. But the whales and the dolphins are still discussing whether it's a land or water mammal. Okay? And they go, ha ha, well, yeah, they say, well, so think about this. If you were intelligent, would you be killing off 80% of the species on your planet? No. Would you be polluting where you live? No. I don't know any other animal that pollutes where it lives. Even owls go poop somewhere else, you know? You know, worms do the same thing. As they move through the ground, they leave it behind, they never come back. 
All right, so they don't do any of that. Would you be basically building things that could wipe out everything on the planet and turn it into a sterile cinder? That's not my definition of intelligence. So like I said, the whales and dolphins are still discussing whether or not it's a land or water mammal. Okay, so we're going to come back to that. Now, because the comment didn't work out, I have a couple other things to do here. So let me get rid of this guy. All right, here we go. Now, this was for movie night last night, but we can watch part of it. I want to talk, this is also, this is, anybody know who Robert Redford is? All right, good, good, good. When something new suddenly appears in a nice sky, it makes us wonder. See that big rock? It's really a comet. People used to believe that comets like this one were bad omens, warnings that trouble was on the way. Today, we know that comets begin as chunks of ice and rock that orbit around the sun, far beyond the planets of our solar system. If one of them is pulled into an orbit closer to the sun's heat, its icy surface changes from solid to gas, unleashing an enormous tail of rock and dust that's millions of miles long. But knowing what a comet is doesn't mean it can't cause trouble. That comet is heading towards Earth. Will it hit? All right, well, you have to watch the rest of the movie to find out. Okay. Uh, it's called Cosmic Collisions, and it is the DVD that I'm handing out. All right, some of them, although some of them are space weather, so you have to come up with them, so. Okay, here we go. Let's see, slideshow. Ah. Hey, it's my frisbee. You don't get to throw it, all right? Now, huh? You promised to a PowerPoint. No, okay, well, then we'll skip this one, then, all right? <laughs> ah, there we go. That's the only thing I want to say, all right? Hollywood, we got a Hollywood. Yeah, you know, you've seen this. Everybody's seen Deep Impact, Armageddon all the other movies that they have, okay? Now, out of the two, Deep Impact's got the best science, all right? Because it actually showed what actually might happen if a chunk a few hundred yards across hits outside of Long Island. I'm sorry, there was science in Armageddon? In Armageddon, yes, yes. <laughs> there was two pieces of science in there. The first one was when the guy was sitting in the aircraft and said, we're setting atop 250,000 pounds of fuel, and it's made by the, or 250,000 moving parts of metal made by the lowest bidder. Okay, all right, and a million tons of explosives. That was the first one. The second one was when they're on the launch pad and he was kissing a girl and doing the thing with the ammo crackers. That was science. All right, so no, that's not science. Okay, so let's go on. All right, that's where, ah, wait, back up. But as we find out, and you'll find out when you talk about the meteorites and stuff, that dynamic collisions do occur. The asteroid Vesta, they just sent that satellite there. They've looked at it. They've done composition. They have figured out that 90% of the other asteroids that, have, that look like that all came from this crash about, I think it's 250 million or 300 million years ago. I forget what the exact dates were. But something ran into this big asteroid out there and whacked it. Now all these pieces. We got, you got a piece of them running around there. Uh, Dave was talking about the, uh, where asteroids are found. Oops, let's go back to this where asteroids are found. As that rock, who's got the rock? Uh, gave, your girls are hogging the rocks again, okay? All right, all right, all right. Now I'm going to mix it up and put it in my pile. All right, I need three volunteers. Ah, there's two right there and there's a the third one right there. Come on up here, all right? All right, in this box, okay, are at least three meteorites. Ooh, ha, there's one in there. Ha, secret one. There are three meteorites in there. Well, it was four, but I got one right here. All right. There are at least three meteorites in there. You have 30 seconds to find those three meteorites. All right? You ready? Everybody, anybody know the Jeopardy song? Do, 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 do. Go. Do, do, do. 30 seconds. Keep going. Do, 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 Oh, wait, wrong song. 
Three, two, one. And, all right. Now, how many meteorites did I say there were? Three. How many rocks you got on that? Four. Sit down. You can't count. All right. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. All right. Let me see here. All right. Oh, cool. Guess what? They found the fossilized turtle shell. Can you see that? That's a fossilized turtle shell. Right, so that wasn't it. Uh, anybody talk to Dave today? You find out any rock with sharp points or holes in it cannot be a meteorite. And that's a chunk of lava. And is it magnetic? Nope. That was not magnetic, so that can't be it. Ah, that's another one that's got holes in it. Can't say anything. That's not magnetic. But they did find this one. Oh, I think it's this. I, 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 I. Your time's up. They did find one of the meteorites, okay? So they found one here. Pass this puppy around. Watch out. It is heavy. Okay? They did find one of the meteorites. So you each get a prize. Yay! Yeah, right. Here, see here. You guys like stickers? Oh, yeah. All right, here, take a You know what? Here, let me get you a better sticker. No, I'll come back and get it. Here, take this. Trade them in for a different sticker when I get back, okay? All right? Trade them in because everybody will get one of those anyways. All right? And by the way, don't put them on you right now. They will stick to your clothing, and I don't guarantee they'll come off. But the next time your dad's asleep on the easy chair, walk up and stick it to his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> or when he's not lucky, go out and stick it on the back of his car. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You thought of that on your own. All right. So they found one of them. They passed around. Now, there are, oh, there are some, oh, there's some more in there. Okay, there's some more in there. I need three more volunteers. Anybody from the tent want to come up? You can come up. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, ah, you've already been there. No fair cheating. Okay, come on up. Come on up. I need three. Three. How many volunteers do I need? All right, that young lady right there. Come on up here. All right. Now here, I'm going to make it easy for you. Make it easier. This is a magnet. See? It sticks to his head. Are you a teenager? How old are you? Okay, good. If he's been a teenager, there'd be no brains there to stick to. So. All right? All right. So here, you can use a magnet if you want, if you need to. All right? So you got 30 seconds. Everybody, let's have the tune. Well, you guys are going to do terrible in karaoke night. <laughs> terrible. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ten, five, three, two, one. Time's up. Yeah. All right. What do we got here? Okay. All right. Put them down here. You think those are rocks? Those are meteorites. All right. All right, how many do you have? Three, all right, they get a prize. They got all three of them. No, they didn't get all three, but they picked three. So here you go, have three. Have a sticker, have a sticker. You can trade these in for other prizes later, okay? All right, two small ones, trade in for a big one of your choice later. All right, let's see here. Ooh. They found one of them too. Remember Dave was talking about the ablated, where they come in at a certain angle and they got a little, little flex and stuff? This is one of those. This little rock came in. Can you see that little rock? Can't. Can you very well? No. It came in, and you can see that it was ablated and flies around. Ah, see, so you can't even find that. Ah, uh, this was an easy one. This one's actually got a flat spot where it's been cut. It's actually just like the other one we had. It is slightly magnetic, but not very. So this is one of the stony meteorites, okay? If I was walking around, I would probably not find this too easily, okay? This is one where they found, and by the way, that one there, that sticks too. But that, unfortunately, is a meteor wrong. That's iron ore. Regular iron, iron ore. It sticks right to it, OK? So all right, so you got two out of three. Right, hold on a second here. Ah, here we go. There, it's another prize for you, since you got two prizes out of, two out of, out of three correct, all right? Now, this is a, a Sky Publishing. the. Uh, Sky Gators Almanac for 2012. By the way, it's the middle of August, so you only got five months left. All right. Now, don't blame me for you just now answering the question. Okay, have a seat. All right. If you'd answered in January, you still kind of got some use out of it. But to let you guys know, I do a lot of outreach programs, okay? And our strong, the Westminster Astronomy Club does about 175 programs a year, okay? I get stuff from NASA and all these other places. I get boxes, and I have no idea. All right? Somebody sent me. Three cases of these things. National Geographic's The Sun, okay? From 2004. Why do they have three cases of them laying around? 
eight years later, but I don't know, they sent them to me. I asked them, said, hey, you got anything old? Like, I get some stuff like Chandra posters and stuff from 2007, 2009, that type of stuff. Well, I've got over there, which would be one of the prices at one of my, uh, my program tomorrow, okay? It's these nice NASA, you know, astronomical calendars, but they're dated 2012. All right, so, and I got them three weeks ago. So, okay, they, and they sent me 200. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. I give them away. People like them. They got pretty pictures, even though they're five months. There's only five months left in the year, you know? So, okay, that's all right. So, all right, so now we're down to, we found some more. All right, found some more media wrongs and media rights. All right, and let's see here. Uh, um, all right, you know what? We may still have at least one, maybe two meteorites in there. I can't see them well enough to tell, but there might be two meteorites in there. So I need three more volunteers for the last three. Yes, you stand right on up here. You, yes, yeah, stand right on up here. You guys, no, you can't go back again. Let's see. Uh, where's the guy that says he knows everything? What? Somebody was talking to Dave and said he knew the answer. Are you out in the, are you out in the tent? Said he knew all the answers. Are you here? I'll be that way, are you? Okay. Uh, let's see. Ah, that guy right back there. Yes, you. Come on up here. All right. Come on up, ladies. While he's making his way forward. Yeah, I know it's very bright. Okay. All right. There's at least one, maybe two meteorites left in there. You ready? Tune. I have to bring up my own music from now on. <laughs> Okay. Well, time must be up. The music quit. All right. And time's up. All right. Pull them out. Which one? Which two? That one and that one. All right. Okay. Good. I said how many were there might be? One or two, right? All right. Well, he got that one's correct, even though it's not very magnetic. But yes, this is the same slice as this one over here. Uh, where is it? The one that's being passed around, that guy? Okay. Again, it's sliced, so that usually gives you a hint. All right. All right, and this one here, oh, I like this one. This is a nice, shiny, smooth river stone. This is my good luck piece. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So, unfortunately, that's not one. But you did get the, the, the last one. I have to look through there and see if that one there. Is that one? Nope, that one's not. Okay. I think that's the last one. All right, but I noticed enough people never pick this one here. One with all the holes and the big craggly edges, the one they used in the pictures, like Armageddon and stuff. They took a weird rock like that, took pictures of it, and didn't played with it to make it look like an asteroid or something. Like that. They don't look like that. Right. It's too light. It's too, too light, too. Well, actually, but the thing is, it's magnetic. All right? It's, mag it's, it's actually lava. Okay? It's uh, solidified lava. It's uh, got a high, what's that? Thank what's the, you. What's the kind of hematite or something like that that's in lava, this particular type? So it is magnetic. It will attract a magnet. Okay? So it's one of my meteor wrongs to try and fool people. So you guys all got a prize, too. All right, let's see here. Uh, all right, you know what? Hey, here you go. Here's a one for you, one for you, and one for you. All right. I'll get rid of these before the night's over. All right. Okay, so that, they found all the meteor rights and some of the meteor wrongs. Oh, ah, guess what? They didn't find, they missed one. This one. All right. Remember the big one I passed around? Oh, wait, I didn't pass that around. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. All right. They missed one, this one right here. Now, it looks like, and you can come up here and look at it after we turn the lights up here in a little bit. You look at it, it looks like a rock with dirt on it. Okay? That's actually what they call a break shift, something like that, from, from the impact. It looks like a rock. But the amazing thing about this is if it's laying there on the ground, you don't know it. You put a magnet near it, it's slightly magnetic, but not really magnetic like an iron one. I mean, see, I can pick it up, okay? So it's got a little more iron and everything else, but it's a rock. You would never know it was there. Uh, I was talking with Dave earlier, and he said that if you take, if anybody got plastic gutters on their house? All right, take one of these rare earth magnets, drag it through your gutter every day. 
Right? Do it every day. Take whatever sticks to it, take it off, put it in the bag, and after a year, he said, you'll have three or four grams of it. He guarantees that 50% of it will be micrometeorites. Okay? Huh? 50%? Yeah, yeah. And if you want to spend the money to have them tested, which it costs more than the whole bag's worth, go right ahead. But, yeah, because that's all that 30 tons of dust falling on our planet. And your roof is a great collector because also there's nothing in that with those shingles usually or with their wood or, or metal uh, or even the asphalt shingles. That's going to be magnetic. They don't use that type of rock in them. So, again, about 50% of them should be meteorite dust if you get any. You should get some. All right. So that was that one. Let's see. Oh, you didn't want to do this again, so we'll just skip this portion here. All right. Now, some of you remember Carl Shoemaker Levy crashed into Jupiter, 21 pieces, left Earth sized problems. One happened in 2009. Same thing. Lucky we have a big brother who protects us from the bullies. Because if we didn't have Jupiter, some of these things hit us. There are more than 170 impact craters on the Earth. All right. And you're looking, well, why are they more here, more here than over here, than out here? Well, nobody lives here. All right? They haven't found anything out there. All right? We got a bunch up here. I'll show you these in a second. Okay? All right? There's some of the ones there. We'll just skip through those. Uh, Chicxulub and the dinosaurs. That was rock six miles across. Uh, again there. We're talking about that guy right there. This one right here. All right? Now, if you're walking out there and you see this rock sticking up out here, well, there's mountains. That could be just a regular rock, right? All right? Well, they find 70% of all meteorites, okay, in two places on this planet. Right? One of them is Antarctica. That's a mile thick sheet of ice. Any rock on top of that? I don't think somebody drove out there one day with a ski mobile and says, hey, let me throw out a couple of rocks. Fool these people, you know, give them some meteor wrongs. Most everything there is a rock, is a meteor, meteorite, all right, because it's white and it landed there, all right, and that's where they find a lot of them. The other place is the Sahara Desert. Our southwestern desert's all rocks anyway, so you wouldn't be able to find it there. But the Sahara Desert, it's a lot of it's sand. So again, this one here, 2008 TC3, was the first celestial object found before it hit us. The first and only. All right? Most of these, when you look at these numbers and stuff, and you go to spaceweather.com and look up this stuff, you'll find this 100 meteor or this 5 meteor, 5 meter or 100 meter at the rock that went by us, and you look at the date and you figure out that the date of closest approach was four days after they found it, okay? So it'd be like you driving down the road, you're going up to a four-way intersection, you drive through it, you know, you got a green light, this cruise right on through. No sooner do you get to the other side when, Rawr! this big tractor trailer goes flying behind you. Well, you didn't see it. It missed you. Same thing. These meteorites missed us. This is the only one they found. In 2000, well, they found it, I don't think it was, yeah, it found it four days or five days before it landed, okay? And then they went out there, they tracked it down, and there it is, all right? A couple of rocks. Pretty cool they were able to do that. All right, we're going to skip that. That's his talk, future impacts. Who knows? All right, can we stop an impact? Ain't no way. This is the hypothesis that's going to come by. You see all the movies, you know, the split the zone where what's-his-name did it, and Stargate turned it into a... Uh, built some Stargate and fly, flew it through the earth. That might be possible, but none of this stuff. They estimated that we'd actually have to find it well out past the orbit of Neptune to have any chance of making it miss our planet by a little bit. All right? And if it did miss our planet by that point because it came so close to our planet, that would probably change the gravity enough that the second time around it would get us. All right? So, well, we delayed it another uh, 38.5 years. Cool, I can have some kids. All right. You can see the infrared, we're going to skip all that. There, we get all that because they didn't want my PowerPoint, so we'll get rid of him. Yes, no, discard. Okay, what do we got here? Ah! Now, I do other programs besides Chicken Little Right. One of them I do is um, Supernovas, or just another, or excuse me, Death from the Skies, or just another bad hair day. All right, so this one is, this is part of that program. Oh, good, 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 good. Yep. Yep. Supernovas are bad, another, just another bad hair day. Do you see anything? Uh, yeah. no. I think it's, I think it's black. Yep. All right. So, hey, it's working. All right. Okay. All right. Good. I'm glad you did that. Let's go here. All we see is 
I'm sorry. See, I told you this wasn't fancy. Uh, please, like I said, I like Calvin and Hobbes too, if you notice. Okay. later this more of this later all right and then the last the last thing I have for you tonight is well, almost the last thing what happened to it oh man it disappeared oh well all right the last thing I have for you is one of the things with scientists how we figure out all this and some of you guys know this already it's a thing called Doppler shift we watch the things we watch we're tracking asteroids and stuff we have to use radar to track them or otherwise we can use them visually, but you're trying to use radar. And we use radar. And having 
Physicists and astronomers called the chromatics. That is completely a cappella. There's no musical instruments at all. That was all done with just their voices. And they do several other songs. This just happens to be the one that I have right now. So again, they do all this stuff. This is how we know some of this stuff. Chicken Little was right. The sky is falling. Okay. We have airplane pieces falling out of the sky. We have rocks falling out of the sky. We have mud falling out of the sky. Uh, we have slushy things. All right, is that one? Is that one? Nope, nope, that's close. It's got a piece of plastic and aluminum foil, so you know. Hey, look what I found. It's my new comet. Nope, so we didn't all that. So that's what happens with Chicken Little, and that's why Chicken Little was right. Uh, our young man out there with his meteorites, please help him out. Buy some. You know, that's the commercial. This last commercial is uh, come out tomorrow at 1.30 for the Night Sky Network program, because uh, some of this stuff that I did tonight is actually from their toolkits. And they're good for, for helping you while you're doing outreach programs to bring difficult subjects to the public. Also is the fact that they, it's free advertising. Okay? NASA approved free advertising. Uh, we've gotten maybe 15 to 20 new members just from the Night Sky Network, them finding us. All right? uh, this stuff that I get, a lot of the stuff I get in the mail, like this here, this R2 robot, the new robot for National Space Station. I got a box the other day. I have no idea who it came from, but I got a whole box of those along with the Mars stuff and the Curiosity. The 200 calendars, I didn't request them. They just come, okay? Uh, I, though I did request, now it took, you know, you know how slow NASA can be sometimes, all right? Back last April of 2011, I ran into Sophia, uh, principal investigator, and I said, Nick, can you give me the heavy little model of the 747? So can you get me one of those? I want to give it away, you know, put it in our observatory. He says, oh, yeah, I'll get you a couple. He says, I'm on the road till September. Send me something after the 1st of September. So I sent him an email on the 10th of September, that's 2011, saying, hey, Nick, I, you know, reminder to do this. You asked me to, here it is. And he says, oh, yeah, all right, I'll send it out to you. Guess what? I got them last week. <laughs> and he sent me an email and said, by the way, we mailed them on the 26th of July. Did you get them? I go, yes. He says, send me some pictures if you give them away, that type of stuff. So I said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I said, thank you for that. I actually told him, I said, the only reason I think you sent them out was because one of our board of directors, Brian Eaney, became an intern for Sophia. He's actually working on the space or on the airplane, which is due to be flight worthy here at the end of the month. So it should be going up for his test runs and other things like that at this point. So we should hear from that infrared observatory at 46,000 feet, something like that, flying around in 747. And if you don't believe flying around with a five-foot hole inside your airplane causes problems, ask the flight engineer. It's just about as bad as having this big thing called a shuttle on top. 
So everything up here on the table is free. There are Yay. DVDs, the cosmic, oh, we didn't see, that's why we didn't see the cosmic collision. Oh, yes, we did. That was the part with the comet that missed the earth or hit the earth. One of those two. Narrated by Robert Redford. So there's a few of those. There's some sun, space, weather, there's curiosity, everything. And take one of everything. And this, uh, remember Don Parks was talking about proper lighting? Good neighbor lighting. You actually, it's, it's on the Sky and Telescope website. It's also on the IDA website, printed out. Uh, wallpaper your neighborhood with it. Actually go to your neighbor's house who has a bad lighting and just tape it all over it. I've done that. Okay. All right. I said, well, maybe they'll get the hint. Because I have some of those... Some of my neighbors got those little globe things and they put all those acorn lights in downtown Sykesville because it's old. And I said, oh, they look good, so leave them off. They look good in the day. You can't see them at night, so just leave them off. Turn them off. Well, they'll look pretty today. Don't even put light bulbs in. Just think all the money you're going to save. We're not having to replace light bulbs, not all that electricity. Well, it won't. I said, the city's been that way for 100 years. They just put them in last year. You know, like you just said, they put them in. They've been 150 years without anything. And now they put them in there and it's already lit up. So uh, that is it. Thank you for coming. All right. Now, but don't run off yet. That's it for the program. Now I get to ask questions, give away prizes. All right. So I got a few prizes. Those of you who want to get prizes, if you don't want to get prizes, and this is where the people down at the, uh, down at the tent uh, we have a radio up here, so I'm going to say this question is for the tent people, even though I see them leaving. Okay? <laughs> All right. And by the way, any mechanical engineers in here? No? Well, good. You guys, then, they're the only people that could be able to put this model together. Uh, you got to be an engineer to put this puppy together. I've tried it several times. Although my six-year-old did it very well one day, so maybe you got to be six or a mechanical engineer. So. All right, first question is how many ingredients in the comet? Raise your hand. Yes, that young lady right there. Five, okay, there we go. All right, name one of the five ingredients. Water. Water, no, it's not water. Carbon dioxide. Dihydrogen monoxide, all right, all right. That's, that's, uh, that's not it. All right, anybody out there with the radio? The next two for the tent. Hey, folks for the tent just walked up. All here. right, okay, that's great then, then. Then you can answer this too. I was going to see, I was going to give prizes just for the people in the tent. All right. All right, we got dihydrogen monoxide. We got ammonium. Ammonium? No, there's no such thing as ammonium. <laughs> Give you another chance. What is it? Yeah. Ammonia. There you go. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Methane. methane. No, it wasn't methane. Remember, methane is deadly. Beans, beans, and musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you make methane. Rock. There you go. All right. All right. Good. I'll give it to her. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to her. I heard that. Yeah, right, 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 uh-huh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right, where is it? Here it is. See, and I'll even give away, before the grand prize, I can give one of these neat 2012 NASA science calendars. You know, like I said, you only got, it's August uh, 7, 18, you only got four and a half months left. All right, there you go. All right, now, what? There, we had rocks, we had methane, or oh, sorry, ammonia, we had carbon dioxide, we had dihydrogen monoxide, and what was the fifth ingredient? I want the correct name. Polyaromatic hydrocarbon. All right. I would accept the mouse brains too, but all right. There you go, sir. There you go. Okay. All right. And now the, oh, the grand prize. Can I have to ask one question about poly? No, we haven't got to questions yet. We've got to give away the prize, and then you can ask questions, okay? Thank you, thank you. All right, this is the grand prize, and it is a uh, microwave background beach ball. All right, grand prize beach ball. <laughs> Inflatable universe. I've got the little piece of paper that goes with it somewhere. So if you can tell me the first song we heard, you had your hand up. Can you sing it? Huh? No? All right, but you're all right. It was on comments. Comments! 
They make your teeth turn green, comets. They smell like gasoline, comets. See? When you play it 100,000 times, you figure it out. Huh? All right, now, what was it? Thank you for all the prizes. Thank you. All right, what's the, what's the question? Uh, is honey also a polymorphic? Polymorphic? Poly is it a transformer? No. Polyaromatic hydrocarbon. Yes, everything, most everything alive has it in, has to some, they're basically just long chain molecules. DNA, RNA, amino acids, they're all made from that stuff. Were those really ground up mice, or did you use something else? Uh, magician never gives away his secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you want to taste it. No, it's not honey. You're more than welcome to come up here. You're more than welcome to come up here and smell it, too. All right? It, uh, I told you, I'm not going to give you. If you want to come up here, stick your finger in and taste it, I'll let you do that. But that's the only way you're going to find out. Yeah, because you can't, ooh. <laughs> I've had this jar for about eight years, so every time I take a taste of it, it's, I'm tempting, you know, I'm just building my immune system. Okay, any other questions? No? Yes? What's the byline between an asteroid and a planetoid? Well, it's the difference between a dwarf planet and a planet. There ain't one. You know, everybody complains about, you know what they were talking about the other day, that Pluto's no longer a planet at all. They get all upset because one planet got demoted. But they made four more planets. By the way, there's 14 planets in case you want to count. Because right? are, are dwarf trees still trees? Yep. Yes. yes. Are dwarf stars still stars? Yes. Dwarf planets are still planets. They had male, female, now they have spaghetti. All right, they just named, they just made a third classification because you think about it, terrestrial planets are small and rocky. Terrestrial means small and rocky. Jovian means big and smelly. Well, Pluto is small and icy, doesn't fit either one. So they had to come up with another definition. So they made it into dwarf planets. So we have 14. Oh, by the way, there's one planet that's had the distinction of being a planet twice and being demoted. Once, all right? That was Ceres, the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, was the first one. It was found right where it's supposed to be, between Mars, halfway between Mars and Jupiter. I found a planet, yay! And then they found 15 more over the next 20 years. Well, they can't all be planets. They can't all be in the same orbit. Ah, oh, it was probably one big planet that broke up. Maybe they had a war, or aliens came in, or something like that, you know? No, it was Jupiter being a bully, you know? It's gravity pushing everything around, kept it from being formed. So after about 20 years, it became Ceres 1, the first minor planet. Asteroid means minor planet. Now Pluto is a, back to numbers. Pluto number 35,400, whatever it was, the last when they changed the status, they gave it a number. But Ceres has now been promoted to dwarf planet. So it's back to being a planet again. Look at me, I'm a planet again. Yep, yep, yep. that type of stuff. So uh, they're Ceres. Then the other one is Pluto. And by the way, since they found Nix Hydra and P5 and P6, whatever it is now around Pluto, they have figured out that Pluto and Charon orbit a center of gravity that is outside the surface of Pluto. Only a few hundred miles, a couple hundred miles, they think, right now. Of course, it's given the New Horizon people a headache because now they found two big rocks and they're getting ready to go through that system which they thought was only Pluto and Charon when they launched it. Okay? And there's two rocks that are, you know, several miles across. So that means there's probably a bunch of little rocks that they don't find or won't find. And they're going to do it at 14 to 15 miles a second. All right? So either we're going to have lots of information or we're going to have nothing. <laughs> it's just like when Curiosity is going to land on the planet. The, the NASA guy says, we got, we got two things going to happen in the next half hour. We're either going to have good live pictures from NASA or from the Mars or we're going to have new... New crater on the moon, called, or new crater on Mars called Curiosity. All right. Luckily, we got pictures. All right. So uh, that's Pluto and Charon, which are now a binary dwarf planet, double D. It's a double D planet. All right. So and then after that, we got Hamayu, Makimaki, and Eris. All right. And now they're they're still discussing Sedna and a few of the other ones. They do not have enough information on them to find out whether or not they're round, and whether or not there are Round and clear area. And they say, well, the definition is one of them, you've got to clear the area. Not a single planet in our solar system has cleared that area out completely. Jupiter has these things called Trojan and Apollo asteroids that are actually in the same orbit as Jupiter. Now, they're locked in 60 degrees on either side, but they're still there. All right? Earth hasn't cleaned out its, 
its neighborhood. We got near Earth asteroids to the tune of a thousand of them already that we have found going by. So there's no planet out there. Neptune didn't clear out its, its area because Pluto actually cuts inside the orbit. Right? And by the way, I did a program uh, where we do a pocket solar system where you know, we're making the planets from the sun out to the last planet. And at present time, it's Pluto. But in 1997, it was not Pluto. Pluto was inside the orbit of Neptune. I did this program to a room full of NASA Goddard scientists. And I'm going, okay, we're going to start here with the sun. Now, what's the farthest planet out of the solar system at this time? And we didn't have dwarf planets. And they all go, Pluto. And I go, no, you're wrong. Boy, you think I told them that ground that gravity didn't work anymore, you know? And that the face on Mars was built by, by my older brother, something like that, you know? No, oh, yeah, it is. And I go, no, it's not. And they argued for 20 minutes. And I finally, one little kid stuck his hand up and he goes, I said, yes, sir, what can I help you with? You didn't know the MCC? Yeah. He says, well, I was under the impression that I looked, you know, he says, looking at his thing, that Pluto's orbit is inside the orbit of Neptune for 20 years, from 1978 to 1998. I go, you get the prize. <laughs> And I go, well, on average, I said, not say on average, I said now, all right? And that's the, one of the last prime presents, which I'll ask tomorrow, but I'll let you all think about this. Now, I won't even tell you. I won't give you any hints, all right? So, I, I'm sorry the comment didn't work, but if you go online to the Nice Guy Network anywhere, just look up making a comment, and if you use carbon dioxide, it does work very well. So, thank you very much, and you can turn me off at this point. Okay? Thank you.